Howdy, howdy, and welcome back to another Lord of Heroes video. All right, and today we're going to talk about the mid game. The mid game that is once you transition from normal and to hard mode. Hard mode, and if you watched the previous video talking about the early game, you notice a little bit of differences in where we have things placed at on the tier list because things get better or worse as we progress forward. So, as usual, we're going to start here at the bottom. No, just don't. These things do nothing. They're not going to help you. Completely, completely falls off. Just, no, no. B tier, you could possibly still use these. I don't I don't recommend any of these heroes that's in the B tier. Even though if you want to go the slow tanky route, you do guys I run from. I know someone right now that is like hardcore using red Mei Lin as their main dealer and it's working pretty well for them. But this is a game where you can actually build almost anything and build them as a DPS and they do well. I still remember before back in the day where I had to tell people like that Fram and Zyra were tanks because of they had the Guardian class. They was naturally tanky. Everybody was trying to build them on crit for damage and it was crazy. I was just like, no, they're tanks. They're not damage dealers. Even though they do good, good damage, they're not damage dealers. Oh, my Zyra's hitting hard. My, my Fram was hitting hard. Like, yeah, yeah. So that was kind of a thing back, back in those times. The good old days. Where everything was really bad and the game wasn't as good as it is now. Because the game is good and if you think any different, stop playing the game. So let's go on up here into this A tier. I think these, like on the paid side, that they're A tier just because, like, if you're spending, you can actually do a little bit more with them. Like, uh, like we got somebody right now that's in Discord, like, grinding they're using one of my good buddies i played a, a couple games with like legit going straight astro team like they just rocking the astro squad it's it's kind of dope though they got they got the red the blue and the green astro just getting it in and then the blue astro is yielding them a lot of results but their team is based on a lot of manipulation of turn bar so it's working pretty well something i wanted to kind of test out too but i just never got a chance to test out on a kr because global was coming out way too soon but a pretty dope concept. Like I said, if you're spending, you can opt to go for other than that. No. Then we got Red Pup, the the Green Astrid, and Olivia. You know, a lot of people are rocking the Olivia. Olivia is really solid. She can get you more turns. So she's a good one to have in your team just to just to yield more turns and that and that such. Green Astrid still is still relatively strong, but by the time you guys get into hard mode real good, you're probably pushing close to the seven days, so you might swap her out for Olivia, so you might not want to put a lot of resources into her. I know some people was keeping Ashley because they like her, and they was just swapping out Johan. I don't recommend it, but it still works. I'm a fan of Johan because I like his kit. I just like what he does. He just makes the game so much easier. The green Olivia definitely can coincide by slowing down the amount of turns the enemy can receive. So that's not bad. And then I used her quite a bit on my old main. So I'm pretty well versed in what she's capable of damage wise and just skill wise. Then we got the red pup here. Red pup is just great. His damage is just is just good. I don't know why he's on F two P because he's not. He should he should be here. I'll be messing up when I be putting things in these tier lists. But he should be here. Yeah. He should be definitely in, in this because he's because I mean you can get him F two P, but if you just spend and get Renal, you can just get him out right. So yeah, that's kind of that thing. But he's great. He's great. Then back into the S tier once again. At this point, I kind of got the contract heroes in here because if you're taking your time, which you should be going through, because well, this is the point where you can start farming and start really building out your comp somewhat. Once we get to possibly get into the contract maybe some of you went past the mid game and went straight into the late game on extreme and still haven't gotten your contract hero yet so once i do that video they will be there too as well but just for the people that are taking their time grinding out just trying to get resources so they can really build their team and have an easy smooth progression definitely got all the contract heroes in the s tier 
up here just because of all of their capabilities. I'm going to say this, I don't know, like a million times. Like, after you guys done with Chrome, go for Lucilica. She's just going to, like, make boss fights so much easier. She's going to farm for you like crazy. Every fight is going... Like, we have these three, five-minute like trial runs and these insanely long boss fights she's going she's top tier for the gill raid like she just does so much damage it's no getting past her capabilities yes she's a single target dealer but at the same time like that single target damage is just it outshines it outshines i mean you can still have like your helga or something as like a secondary dps but, like, your main DPS definitely should be the, uh, the Green Lasilica. Now, I'm not going to say uh, Lare is bad because I used her. She's the one of two next to Fram that has an AoE death break. And you have to skill her up for it to be more than one turn. But just even that one turn it could be a difference maker. But at the same time, I mean, you're using strikers. You don't really nev need death breaks like that for strikers since they're going to be ignoring most of the defense anyway. And until you really build in for full damage comps, like, honestly, just the death break is just not that important to have, even though it is on her first skill. Now, if you're looking for a farmer, if she's your favorite waifu, if you're trying to build for PvP and you just rather use her, then by all means that she will be great for your progression moving forward, as well as using her for PvP. So, that'll be an option. Life is, yeah, once again... Probably you big budget guys can get them. The the Astrid, the Dirty Bird, they both, just that single target damage is just the output and the damage is just insane. It's great. It's going to be good for PvP as well, but specifically for progression, it wouldn't be bad. I just look at it like it will be the position that either Astrid or Olivia will be in. They will be not exactly your main damage, but like your utility or your secondary damage. Personally, they will be more of secondary damage than utility because they don't really provide any like buffs or debuffs that will be beneficial for the team. Just uh, raw damage. But if you're paying to play, that's all you're really looking for anyway. Then we got the Red Yashua. At this point, you have him unlocked and able to be used. Unlike uh, the last tier list where you have to actually complete normal. But now that you're in hard, you're able to use him and take him through your progression. He would be really great to uh, have. He costs just as much as Red Vanessa. Like you see, he costs 500000 like, really, uh, pretty expensive. I mean, you could opt to get him. He doesn't protect everybody. He would protect just the damage dealer. And he can possibly just do do work for your team. And if you just use him, you just won't have your heals or sustain. So you'd be relying on raw damage. But if you got that kind of, if you got that kind of money to spend, I mean, you probably have Lapis too. <laughs> so outside of that, we do have Green Charlotte once again. Right at the top, she's still going to be staple to go all the way through. I was just slapping them in. I mean, technically, it still will be F2P the way you get them, but just because you can purchase them early, you can purchase these uh, heroes rather than acquire them through completion or contract of story, That will, that is the difference maker there. That's why I'm just kind of like a stickler for that. But outside of that, there's not really much else to say. Johan still performs the same. It's just, like, you can build him for damage, but going through hard, you kind of want to start getting him a little more tankier and actually being the tank that he's supposed to be. You can still have him on a fast crit damage, uh, a fast crit rate build, so he can give you some extra damage since his second skill is AoE. On top of, by then, you will have this, possibly have the assist formation if you're above level 10, so he can start getting caught into the battle and possibly passively getting the provoke but since the enemies and the bosses especially hit harder in hard mode you definitely want to have some hp and defense on him but you can still get like some attack on him i mean you have four slots your weapon your chest your glove and your boots to choose on how you're going to build so you can opt to go from a all attack build to double attack a hp and a dev couple hps couple devs one attack like whatever whatever fits you and whatever you have in your box and whatever works the best in your comp so 
that's kind of how he fits here on this tier list. A lot of things won't change going on, but at the very least, this is just how it is. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and if you did, make sure you smash that like button. If you didn't, there is a button for you guys as well. Link to our Discord where we talk about this game, and you can come hang out and talk with us about it will be in the description box below, as well as the pinned comment below. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn post notifications on so you can see my content when it goes live first. And as always, this is your your host, GamerDude2088, and I'll see you guys next time. Much love, God bless, deuces.